so Navratri is happening right now, which is a nine day long Hindu festival celebrating and worshipping Durga or the Divine Mother. And for those of us who are not from that culture, this might sound very irrelevant and out there, far out. But it's actually very, very close to us. And I would like to see if we can use a different language and a different way of approach to bring it home for all of us. And to do that, I'm going to use the philosophy of Tantra. Not that kind of Tantra, but the real Tantra, the yogic Tantra, which goes back thousands and thousands of years. Because the core principle of Tantra is that the entire universe is the manifestation of pure consciousness. And everything is just one pure undivided consciousness. And the goal of Tantra is to lead the sadak or the student towards the realization of this oneness. In the process of manifestation, this consciousness divides into two aspects, neither, neither of which can exist without the other. One aspect is referred to as Shiva. It's the static, formless aspect of just being. It's formless, it's static, it's the zero. It's very hard to talk about because all the words are something and I'm trying to describe something which is nothing. And the other aspect is Shakti, the dynamic, creative force which creates, which creates the entire universe. All the, the, my voice, the sounds, ev everything is Shakti. So no thing is Shiva, everything is Shakti. And neither of which can exist without the other. The same way these words can't exist without the underlying silence behind them. The form can't exist without the formless. And there is no formless without form, but that's a different conversation. We're not going to get into that now. What I want to talk about is Shakti, because that is the Divine Mother. And how can we experience the Divine Mother in our everyday life? For example, when you're out in nature and you look at a leaf or you look at the bark on the tree, you see a certain intelligence behind it. And when you look around yourself, you see all these different plants and the weather and the sunshine and all these different forms working together in harmony. And they are all interconnected with one another. And you feel a kind of wisdom and perfection behind it. But when it comes to the city, or when it comes to other people, or especially when it comes to yourself, you don't really see this lawfulness. <laughs> And you have this judging mind that stops you from perceiving the beauty and the form behind that as well. Because in truth, nothing exists outside of nature. The stars, down to the electrons, your thoughts, your emotions. There's no thing I can say that would exist outside of nature. And that's Prakriti in Hinduism. Mother Nature, the Goddess. It's all Shakti. It's all patterns of energy. All these names that I'm saying are referring to that kind of law, that intelligence that you can see in nature. And when you realize, as Maharaji said, that you will know God when you see the whole universe as the Mother, what that means to me is that when you're able to perceive everything around you as well as within you as part of that perfection, that lawfulness, that wisdom of nature, then you will understand the oneness of things and inter and you will feel you won't feel separate anymore but you will feel and experience the unity of it and when you quiet down your mind and you kind of look at it from above you know you're not stuck in the traffic traffic jam you have a bird's view you're looking at all the forms from above you see this I can't describe it with words, it's just so perfect. And it's like looking at the surface of the water and seeing all the different ripples coming to the surface and they all wash over each other and they just in so perfectly in harmony with one another that you can see this diamond-like perfection 
And it's time for us to realize that we are not separate from this perfection. And our emotions, our thoughts, our feelings are the mosquito that just bit my forehead <laughs> is all part of the same perfection. And it's just like the weather changing, you know? Ah, oh, it's raining now. Hmm, maybe I should wear a raincoat. Ah, oh, look, there's depression. Maybe I'm gonna spend today in bed. And it's okay. And you see all your emotions, all your thoughts change just like the weather. Just mother nature doing its lila, doing its play. Just Prakriti dancing. <laughs> Now you see, I, I use the word perfection a lot and it's not a good word to use, I know that because you might ask perfect to opposed to what, it's, it's very relative. For example, for a marksman, if she aims to hit right the middle of the target and she hits it right the middle, that's a perfect shot as opposed to missing the target. And this has a kind of good and bad duality inherent in it, if you can hear that. Now, the perfection that I'm referring to, I think could be best described by this quote that I found in a book called The Inner Game of Tennis. It goes like, The rose is a rose from the time it is a seed to the time it dies. Within it, at all times, it contains its whole potential. It seems to be constantly in the process of change. Yet, at each state, at each moment, it is perfectly all right as it is. So you may see that the perfection I'm talking about is not so dualistic. It's more organic. It's a process. It's not good opposed to bad. It's life. And now I would like to come back to the Divine Mother because this time is used to remember and honor Mother Nature or Shakti or the Divine Mother whatever you want to call it. It really doesn't matter what you call it. How can you honor the law, the intelligence, the wisdom, the interconnectedness of everything? The way to embrace and honor Mother Nature is not necessarily doing something about it. I think, I think we could co all come to this conclusion looking at the climate crisis that we are facing right now. We're doing too much <laughs> and not enough at the same time. Different topic. But what this means in our everyday life is really just starting to perceive our emotions, our thoughts and our circumstances in a different way. They are not so much part of the storyline of this is where I'm coming from, this is where I'm going, this is where I think I am. There are more energy that is just being given to us to work with and we can either judge it and push it away or grab at it, that's also keeping us separate from it, or just staying open and just staying open with an open heart and letting it in. Ah, depression. Hmm. Wow, so thick. Ah, oh, pain, hmm, look at that one. And just keep absorbing it into yourself. So the way you can honor your own process and mother nature and this wisdom and the divine mother is by recognizing her. You don't have to do anything, you just have to notice because she likes to play hide and seek <laughs> and she hides very well. Maha Maya, the great illusion. The veil which keeps us separate from seeing the pure consciousness inherent in everything. So the way you can honor her is that next time you have an argument with your partner or you have an emotion that you feel very uncomfortable with or some life situation happened that makes you upset, instead of getting all caught up in the melodrama and making it part of your storyline, just see her. Ah, Ma, there you are. Wow, I actually thought that you are very ugly emotion, but no, I see you now. You're just Shakti, there you are, okay. All right. And just work with it and just keep open to it. And if you're able to remember all the time, slowly, slowly, your life is gonna become a very beautiful play, like a flower blooming. And just, you're gonna be able to take in more and more light. Ah. 
Thank you. Jai Mataji.